Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us from the wonderful world of theorycraft. Currently, currently crowdfunding and which is currently doing well, I, sh I should note, the custom spell system in the form of Codex Arcana, the one and o the one and only Rai Alboa, no seven seas of Rai. Hello, he's heard them all. How are you doing today, man? Great. Thank you very much, Mildred, for having us on. I really appreciate that and appreciate you reaching out to us. Um, That's it was a brilliant invitation to receive. So, it's a bit of a tradition to open with the humble beginnings, in a, in a sense. So, okay. I'd like you to walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Okay, I like that. So, my humble uh, beginnings of, with role-playing. I, um, I was at university, and my housemates were... Um, avid gamers. Um, uh, they played uh, AD uh, and D for a number of years before 3rd uh, edition was released in, two th was it June 2000? Certainly 2000. Yep. And uh, and they, uh, they, 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 they picked up the first copies of 3rd uh, edition. Um, they were desperate to play. Um, Dungeons & Dragons is something that I'd heard of and uh, I very much enjoyed the 80s cartoon as a child uh, but it's not something I'd ever had been able to have a go at I wasn't aware of anyone else playing it um, near me certainly none of my friends were doing it at the time but uh, as they picked up the the third edition I was able to uh, to join them at the table and that was the start for me myself um, it was a, a great introduction beginning with a, a new edition was 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 a wonderful way to start the game yep. now that's with that said as getting to the codex arcana which congr congratulations on it getting past its goal with pl with plenty of time to spare because you're asking for absolutely no 15,000 yeah, 15, pounds and it's currently at um 15560 if i've got my if i've got my conversions right Yep, not far off at all. It uh, hit its mark. Exactly right, actually. It hit its mark uh, yesterday, which was wonderful. Uh, I think I think about um, three in the morning. Um, I'd uh, I'd stepped away uh, only an hour or so before uh, before it uh, it funded. I I couldn't wait up any longer to uh, to to wait for it to hit that magic number. But uh, yes, no, it funded yesterday, which is brilliant to uh, to achieve. Mm -hmm. And now, as I as I understand it, the core conceit with this is essentially a um, a custom spell system. You got it. So it's a unique spell creation system for the the, the print and the initial PDF that we're releasing is is for five e mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the the up and coming five point two edition of the game. Um, the 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 pretext behind it is that. Tabletop role-playing games are all about creativity. Um, you know, you create your characters, you create you create your adventures, and fancy magic though is a more you know spell slot systems which is more than usable. Um, it 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 doesn't allow you to. It doesn't provide you with a framework to continue that creation. You can't create your own spells without running them by your DM and getting sign off and quite in my experience a number of DMs are very nervous about new spells being introduced by players because of the the potential for like uh, for, for spell creep and power uh, power creep in particular um, and likewise if you're a DM and you're creating your own spells when I've done that in the past you almost feel like there's a necess the need to justify it to the PCs if it's if you've got that those players at the table which which know the game well, and you put something before them that they've not seen before. Some, you know, they, they might feel it's maybe it's just a wonderful situation to employ it, 
sometimes there, there can be a little bit of uh, concern that you're you know you're 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 bringing too much in and over overpowering your 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 your, your challenges that you put before them. So I wanted to create a framework that very easily fitted within the existing um, game mechanic, not not a bolt-on mechanic, but something that fitted within the the, the um, concept of the game, mm -hmm. and would allow players away from the table to craft their own spells, to bring that creativity for their their divine or arcane magic users of any kind to their game, but also on the fly in the moment allow them to adapt a spell that they know quickly um, so that it could really fit that situation. Uh, things like um, I can up the power if I reduce the range. I can. I don't need this fireball to hit um, a, you know, a 20 um, foot radius. I need it. Or 30 foot radius. I need it to just to hit five foot 10 foot radius so i'm going you know i need to adapt that element of the spell and because i'm reducing the range of, of area of effect i'm going to employ that to increase the range of the spell or maybe i'm going to decrease the range as well and try and amp the power yeah. and make sure it's in a a balanced way and that's with this creativity i mean the thing about balance is too much balance can really take the fun sometimes out of a, a, a game but it needs to be relational to each other every aspect that you adjust has to be able to um, balance against something else and uh, very quickly um, allow you to to develop it and so so uh, Codex Kana came out of that uh, it's something I started a number of years ago for my own TTRPG and uh, that's where it, it, it its origin was mm -hmm. And a couple of players of mine just said, "Well, let's 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 adapt it for for 5e," um, which I thought, "Yeah, great, let's let's do that." And kind of what I've done with a number of the kickstarters that we've put out there is that I have, you know, with like for example our last one, which was Locked Lairs, which did really well. The one before that was the, the, the Riddle Register. These are all projects that I've firstly done for myself, um, and after I've become happy with them after I've played with them and, and, and tweaked them to the point where I'm, I'm really good with it that's when I look at potentially putting it out and seeing who else would like to enjoy it um, and so far that's worked out pretty well for us which I'm very pleased with mm -hmm. now I've seen I've seen my fair share of custom spell systems in, sure. ver in various games not, ju not just in not just in the D20 bubble as it were Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, with is it a, is is it a is it a case of mixing and matching with tags? How how exactly would one create a custom spell within the system that you have? Okay. Um, so in effect, every spell has certain key attributes. Um, so let, let's let's stick with uh, one that we're probably somewhat familiar with: fire, good old fireball. So it's got a range, it's got an elemental type, it's got an area effect, it's got a damage associated with it. Um, there are a number of other elements that, that are also attributed, to, you know, that, that 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 build up to that spell. And what we've done is we've we've cut down every spell to its core defining features. And the balancing aspect for Five E comes in that we now have to balance each of these aspects against one another, um, effectively assigning a score to these different elements um, which gives a total I guess with the word we've been using a lot which I don't like to be fair is cost for the spell um, and then when you've got that cost you need to find a way to to offset it so for example um, very obvious ones would be somatic components uh, verbal components material components all these things help drive down that cost and you the idea being that you've got to find a way to get the cost of this 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 spell, whether it's one from a, whether you're mimicking a, you know, a, a, a spell which is everyone's very familiar with from a, a core book, or if you're creating your own, um, the, the the cost is something you've got to mitigate, and you bring you find ways to bring that spell down, that spell cost down, until it gets to the point where your spell casting uh, attribute, um, not the modifier, but your spell casting attribute score, your main attribute score for that that spell casting ability, uh, can handle it. 
if you can't bring it down, um, if, for example, you need to, um, maybe the, the cards are on, you know, the cards are on the table. This is it's now or never. You you you're at, you know you're you're up front. You're on point, and you've you've, you've got to find a way to 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 get the result you need. Bring down the big bad, whatever it might be. You can have the opportunity to overcharge your spell. That's where you've not been able to bring that overall cost down to where your your defining uh, your spellcasting attribute is. And then there's 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 some other mitigating factor. You know, maybe it's uh, maybe that uh, overcharge spell um, uh, creates physical damage or long term um, attribute damage. You know, there's there's different ways of driving that score and uh, and trying to offset that cost. Um, but you're right in that number of systems. You know, there are other spell casting systems out there. Um, you know, the Vancey Magic is a big one. Spell points another one. Uh, there are other types of spell casting systems. But for me, particularly when it comes to a bespoke system, none of the systems that I've seen, and I, I've looked at a few over the years as I've been developing Mana Curiosity, um, none of them have the scope that I think it needs. So I mentioned earlier that uh, Codex Khan has started. Um, as part of my homebrew um, TTRPG, um, within the scope of that, I've currently got two thousand eight hundred twenty-three individual spell descriptions. Now, Codex Arcana, I've floated uh, f- uh, with the Kickstarter. You know, it's, it's going to have over a thousand. In truth, I really want to bring in as many as those as possible. Um, I suspect a number of them will, will get filtered down, uh, but I still, you know, because. Um, these are these are unique spell descriptions that I've been building for for my own purposes. If that makes sense, um, I still like to hit over two thousand five hundred because that just seems like a good number, and I've got the content. But um, I think we're certainly going to get to uh, over the two thousand. That's what I'd like to see inside the codex. But it's that scope that really gives it its own sort of um, its own sort of place in this in the gaming sphere. No other. Magic creation system that I've I've seen has ever been it you know able to put anything in there that that, that competes. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I can get I can get that now. Within that, within that particular um, set that particular setup that you have, is it would the cat would the casting itself still be in that spell charge fancy and model would it be? A um, spell point system? Would it be something different altogether? Sure. Um, it's um, I, I, well, I see it as something completely different. I see it as something on its own unique thing. Uh, you, we, we, you take the spell slots and, and put them to one side. They're not, you know, they wouldn't be used in codex. Mm-hmm. Uh, spell points again. That's it's a different way of doing it, but it's it's not how I see codex arcana. Uh, you know, in the viewpoint of Codex's uh, system, you can cast as many spells as you know your um, your your key spellcasting ability allows. So, for example, um, if you are if you're a wizard, uh, your your defining spellcasting um, attribute is is intelligence, and so you, as long as the spell is, cost is underneath your intelligence score. And you can you can cast it that day. You will not run out of spells as long as you don't overtax yourself. Um, the interesting thing there is that it it it, it creates um, it, it could be seen as creating a, a, a balanced sway, um, but we we mitigate that by you know the the you know there the, 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 there is a cost to magic because you're effectively channeling you know a, a, a chaos in the world. You're creating a unique. Uh, effect from nothing but uh, your, your 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 innate will or your your ability to to influence the world. Uh, so it's it's um, it does give you access to higher level spells uh, or higher level effects earlier, but they would always cost. You know, there would always be a detrimental cost to that if you that you need to mitigate somehow, whether that's through um, you know. Burning XP, maybe maybe that way was by you know you know uh, taking overcharge damage. There are there are different ways to to, to settle that, uh, but that's part of what the play testing will be is you know is intended to bring out. That's that's what we're we're planning on doing over the next six months hard to make sure that it it fits well with our with the ex- existing game and doesn't doesn't overpower 
the other classes that are non-spellcasters. That's the critical thing here. It doesn't just, doesn't just have to allow creativity for a player who wants to be a spellcaster. It has to not overshadow the other players. It has to not take away from the, the martial classes or something. Um, it has to sit well with them because a team is not just one person. A party is made up of everybody else around the table. So we can't have one person shining too far. Um, so it's uh, it's 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 you know it's, it's another project that's going to be great to work on, uh, and the playtesting playtesting things is always fun. You know, get get your friends, whether it's late at night or middle of the day, get everyone around the table, and you know you can have a run 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 different scenarios that you set up just for fun. You can either utilize it in an existing campaign to test it, which is a great way of test testing different mechanics, but is the slowest way of testing it. Uh, quite often we find that um, just just get your friends around the table with a, a bottle of wine. Some times people bring cheese. I don't know why, but yeah, that's that's an option. And and we just set things up and see how it plays and then talk about whether it's working or not and adapt. Um, and that's that's the brilliant thing. But the, the, the good thing about Arcana is that um, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe a backer has a different view on, on the power associated with this element of, uh, of, of, of the framework. So, it can just be tweaked. It can just be re reduced down, um, and we'll, we're going to provide opportunity for, for DMs to do that, manage that within the book. So there's no no worry there. Mm -hmm. And with that, in, with that, in, with that in mind, uh, is it would would this would this sort of thing also? Uh, also account for different types of ma different types of magic traditions beyond beyond just um beyond just cat beyond just casting classes yeah so we we were looking at um part of the play testing will be to understand um how different spell casting traditions come into this uh as it stands we've got the core mechanic which worked well in my ttrpg um, but there are, but Five E is a different system. So we've not just got to bring in this this framework for creativity. We've also got to make sure that other th other elements can play into it. Um, and and that other uh, spellcasting backgrounds work well with the, with the overall framework. Um, and that's like I said, that, that's that's all going to be part of the the play, play test. Um, we'll we'll schedule it out, and when we're happy with one section, we'll move on to the next. These things can often work in the pace that when you then move on to the next sort of section to to to, to look at it and see, do you want it to capture in you know, uh, encapsulate every aspect of the of the game as it stands? And of course, we've got a new edition coming out soon, so we need to make sure that it will also work really well with with what we call five point two that around the table, simply because it's based on the uh, five point two SRD. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's we, we we need to take it. We need to look at it through that. That, that lens as well um, and it's it's just an exciting exciting time um, we've got with all these different things coming through it's going to be great to bring it together but the the brilliant thing for us is that we're not just we don't just play 5e and you know we, we, we play a, a number of different games mm -hmm. um, and so our attention is not just to stop at 5e don't get me wrong the Kickstarter is focused on 5e um, but as as we as we work on it for our other games, you know, for example, PF two, uh, Shadow Dot, um, a backer even suggested that we look at uh, introducing into DC twenty, which, sure, um, you know, as as we as we 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 work on these different systems, we're just going to release the PDF for the for the backers. You know, it's the case is that you know we we will have done the work for ourselves. And we're happy with it. We'll just share the the electronic uh, version with 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 all the backers that have joined us on this journey. So that that'll be exciting. Um, so you know we're not we're not looking just to stop at five E. Though the the Kickstarter is focused on five E. Mm -hmm. um, we like this system. This works well for us. And so we're just looking to ad adapt it and then introduce it to the games that we're also playing. Um, and we'll see we'll see how that goes. That will be a longer term. <laughs> that, 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 to get that right, to get the playtesting done on that right, it's it is it's sort of a, a longer term sort of goal. But 
when you know a system, once you've converted mm. it for something you're familiar with, you can just keep working on it. And you get a feel for where the balance is. Um, the critical thing is then, you know, matching the language, making sure that terms that were a, a system uh, focus don't translate into other games that don't have that reference. Um, but that's part, that's part of what we enjoy doing. Um, I can, yeah, I, I can, I can certainly get that. I can certainly get that. For, for me, it's, it sounds like there, that, um, it's, that even with it, even within the codex, it's not just one sole, <coughs> um, si system for spellcasting and for, and for how, and for how, ma how magic is do is doled out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. The I su I suppose in I suppose in that reg in that regard the next thing I'd I'd want to ask is in regard to you you talk you talk about the idea of um, things like dual casting or co or spell combos or overcharging sure sure is that is that done in a way that's similar to meta magic or is it a different beast entirely. Um, I guess you could see um, certain aspects of that are akin to meta magic. Sure. Uh, for example, with, with dual casting, the idea is, there is that um, sometimes you know you 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 you're in a situation where you need something more, right? You need, or maybe you need something really big. Well, dual casting, which is not doesn't isn't just linked to um, uh, having another person uh, helping. It could be a whole number of people helping you. Um, but dual casting is 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 uh, where you know, I've got I've got this I've got this idea I've got this spell I really want to push it forward, but I can't manage the cost. Can you know? Can you also help me with this? You know? Can we can we work together? Can we cast this spell together? And then also you've got two players, maybe more, working together to create this incredible effect, um, whatever that might be. And that's the brilliant thing about about this is that though we're providing the, 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 within the framework. Um, Structure on 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 spell effects and and, and ratings and scores, uh, and descriptions. The 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 thousand plus spell descriptions that are going to be in in the codex will give um, backers the opportunity to understand what kind of power level their own imaginative idea spell ideas should sit at, and and for that reason, it all fits well within itself. Um, but dual casting it was a great thing that came out of uh, out of playtesting. Uh, when we were when we started, this is just some years ago when we started uh, playing around with it. Um, you know, we had a player that, that that really wanted to try and open a portal, but it was too big a cost. They couldn't find a way to to bring that overall expense down. Um, not you know, in, 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 even with their, their own you know their entire um, HP couldn't um, couldn't take that much damage. Um, so, so a fellow party member just said, "Well, I'll, I'll, I'll step in as well. You know, we'll we'll do it together." And there, are, you know, it allowed them to create this bigger effect and share that cost, um, which which meant, you know, it, it it changed the game. And that's really what we're looking for here is is a way to allow players to utilize the creativity to shift that dynamic in that moment for whatever it comes from. Mm. I've always found it quite surprising, actually, that uh, um, publishers haven't haven't gone down this route. I mean, I remember, what was it now, is it, back in the third edition days, there were rules for creating your own magic items, which seemed to get lost with 5e. And that, yeah. now I understand that's coming back in, in 5.2. You can blame Crawford for his, for his whole, oh, we left it blank so that pl so that players could come up with it on their own. Can't, mm. um, which ended up yeah. with a bunch of people um, coming up with it in third party and none of them really meshing because... There was no direction to fall back on. Mm. Well, you can also blame Crawford for um, having to have a Twitter account to look up um, eraticas, eraticas to the to, this, to the rules because they they dropped the the formalized eratica pro process, didn't they? Which was uh, was no, for instead, me. No, instead they used un they instead they used Unearthed Arcana, which is not is not much better in my opinion. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, sometimes, yeah. sometimes using Merle's Twitter account to po to post fixes. I remember 
an infamous case of that with um, one of the many attempts to try and fix the ranger. Mm. A, sure. A I, likewise, I remember. Day one. I remember spending a lot. Uh, I, I really enjoy character creation. That's part of it. the game for me. Just doesn't just happen at the table. Whether I'm DMing or I'm playing, um, I, I enjoy working on it away from the table. And if I'm, I'm playing a game, I character creation is my thing. And I remember this is, again some years back uh, playing a five E game. Um, I had this character concept I worked on. I really loved the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uses thrown weapons. Um, and it all stacked up well, and I knew knew exactly how this character's development was going to go from level one to twenty, uh, which is the kind of thing I've always had with 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 games. I like to see. I don't want to just build a character. I want to know where it's going. I want to see any develop type of thing. Um, and uh, and yes, unfortunately, there was a tweet that completely kiboshed a uh, character concept because. The I think it was the, uh, the weapon. Sorry, I have my my cat mowing at me. Uh, <laughs> bless her. Get all the whiskey. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, that tweet completely destroyed that character concept. Um, I've never really forgiven him for that, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I can't I can't really pass too much judgment since on my shelf I keep a book of grudges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Taking a note from the book of grudges that the dwarves in Warhammer have. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dock that. Uh, my shelf is full of um, planners from previous previous characters. Yeah. Well, I've got all their cap sheets and uh, and and their their, their campaigns yeah. mapped out in each journal. Plus, I spent, which is good. I spent. I've spent way too much time explore, exploring how one can adapt characters from various IPs into different TTRPGs. Um, I sure. Suppose in, I suppose that can be a lot of fun. In a roundabout way, I... I, um... I think that the... that, um... Michael Serbrook certainly contributed to that interest. Um... But it's a great... It's a great hobby to have. You know, if, if you've got a character concept that you know, is... is, uh, is something you enjoy... Uh, in a show, I like yeah. I was, years ago, I, I had a thing about trying to trying to build them in different game systems, and that was great fun. Uh, but the fun element of that for me was this is the character concept. This is how I want to try and realize it. Now, how do the rules of the game impact on that development? Mm -hmm. it, do I is there a way around that within the rules, or um, how does it, or does it fundamentally change that concept? And all too often, um, I would end up with a, 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 a very different character to what I intended to build, but one that I was way more excited to play because of the the game mechanics influencing how it would develop. Um, one of my favourite characters from years ago was was based on uh, uh, Gothic horror. Was the pretext there? So I wanted to bring in things such as. Uh, rebirth and uh, change and all these different things. So, so um, you know, um, Gothic horror being um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and um, Bram Stoker's Dracula, all the, you know, and, and, and you know, Dorian Gray, all these great titles. Um, and so I came up with this concept, and then it was a case of right, how do I, how do I, I, I can achieve all these things, but how do I achieve them earlier? How do I make how do I optimize this so I can hit these key bait beats um, as early as possible? And that's uh, that's the kind of fun you can have when you really understand the system, um, and you have access to you know as you know if you're lucky enough to have access to the full breadth of rules, I think then you've got the opportunity to uh, to really develop the characters that that can be unique in their own way. Mm -hmm. it, of course, it takes a while for for um, game systems to get to that sort of that sort of level, but. Uh, I just hope it doesn't lose that going forward. Yeah, I, I can, I can certainly get that. So, with with that in with that in mind, with with the spell setup that you have, is is it going to be a case where it's mostly going to be showing how how um, how they can be integrated with the existing spell casting classes? Do you plan on introducing new ones, um, and possibly good, new good spell point. classes? 
Yep. So it's critical for me that it, it fits well within the within existing spellcasting classes. Mm-hmm. You know, again, I didn't want it to be this additional meta mechanic or meta points that stick onto the side of an existing game rule, a uh, game system. Um, I, I wanted to something that uh, framework that worked with existing classes um, that we all know and love and understand. Importantly, and then because the Codex of Connor is a, it's different, a, its own different animal. We found in our games that we were able to create unique classes, almost. So, for example, the, the, the one of the one of the ones we had the most fun with recently uh, is what we call the um, uh, ne- the, the, the necrotic uh, evoker, where it this 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 spellcaster draws on life energy, whether it's its own or maybe another's, um, and channels it simply through into uh, elemental uh, damage, maybe. So maybe it's maybe it's a specialist uh, necrotic evoker. So it draws on I don't know. Maybe it's got a box of ah, um, maybe it's got it's, it's, you know, a, a familiar, a lizard familiar. When this poor familiar is just used as a battery to drive other things, um, and it just simply channels it through to um, fireball, maybe or, or, or core lightning, because those are the things that it really. Maybe it goes full on um, Palpatine and has some of that uh, um, Sith lightning going. You know, it's there's there's lots of fun that we found that we we can have with this, and it doesn't take long for you to kind of realise that actually, um, I've, I've created this this effectively this 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 class of its own making, um, no, um, almost not by accident, but 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 by following a, a character concept, um, and it's uh, part of the playtesting will be to make sure that it sits again well with with um, different schools that we can go into, you know, so, uh, or, or how things change when we all hit level three. Um, and we end up with subclasses. But we, we, that's part of the balancing. Yeah, and I, I, can, I can certainly get behind that. The, now with that, with that kind of thing in mind, there is one, there's one. There's one particular build that I've, da- I've dabbled with as something of a running gag for some, for some of my sh- some of my um, games. That I'm okay. curious if this is if this is something that would be doable in um, co- in Codex Arcana. Okay, let's and find out. It, and that <laughs> is the Muscle Wizard, which is with a spellcaster okay. who quite li- quite literally ca- uses his magic by flexing. Sure, sure. <laughs> it started as a, like it. it started as a dumb joke, and I ju- I just went further, even doing a bad Hans and Franz impression <laughs> for the ca- well for the character. He flexes like a bodybuilder, and that's how he casts magic. I like it. I like it. Um, if, if, we wanted, if, we wanted if, a if, straight face examples. caster. That's why. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Well, maybe if strength is their primary. Spellcasting attribute, then, then that this, the, the mechanic will work with that just fine. It will be treated just like any other um, um, primary casting ability. But uh, it is, it's an interesting uh, build because a friend of mine did something not quite like that, but f- quite similar. Um, you know, a few months ago, um, and it was it was a it was a, 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 w- a wizard, but his spells were focused on um, physical improvement. So. You know, he would he would channel his magical ability in in, in giving him physical buffs, uh, increasing so so to increase that strength. And um, we often joked that it was kind of like the Hulk taking form, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, he just kind of, as you said, flex. Uh, all of a sudden, he just sort of pulls himself into it as much as he can and 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 and, and uh, strains those muscles as much as possible. They grow. And all of a sudden, you know, he's 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 now able to swing his his staff with a bit more force. That type of scenario. So it's it's it, the brilliant thing about it is you can adapt. You can adapt to what you need to do, and you're not constrained. It's not just the spells I know, the spells I learn, the spells that's in the book. It's right. We can fix this. I, you, if if spell casting is your thing, you've got you you got access to all the options you might want as long as you are creative enough. Or you have looked through the pages of the book um, 
beforehand, you'll have a steer. Yeah, which, which if I'm if I'm being honest, when it comes to some, when it comes to some classes, it's always it's always amused me that they that they would even have a defined spell list. Um, like for example, sorcerers. Sure. Like. Yes. The whole yeah. gi- the whole yeah. gimmick with sorcerers is that they're using in. They're using inborn magical ability. Mm-hmm. And they, how do they know how it's going to develop? You know, this is the thing. It would it would take its own journey, wouldn't it? Um, there might be a common thread, a common theme. Um, you know, if if well, it depends on the source of that magic, maybe if it's from an, an elemental plane or if it's from association with with a darker being. Who knows? But you'd like to think it carried that commonality. Um, so I share that. I, I agree with that absolutely, hundred percent. Um, it is important for, 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 for systems I think it's important for systems to reflect that and even if it was uh, if, if, if you're doing a straight wizard caster as vanilla as possible um, would you just learn from the book or the scrolls around you wouldn't you dabble wouldn't you have a, an affinity to some particular uh, um, technique or or, 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 or or study and and just follow that direction so, I, I think there are there are there are some issues with with the common magic systems out there that are used, and they were just uh, just generally accepted, and that's and that was the completely the basis of of Codex. You created a framework that fits well with with an existing system that that uh, that allows players access to that creativity that they all have. I mean, TTRPGs is is all based on creative the creative view of the individual and the creative experience. Of a, of a shared group, and that's that's what we wanted to build on. Mm-hmm. And when it com- when it comes to when it comes when it comes to it, I I liken it to the difference between somebody who follows the directions of a recipe and somebody who wings it, both and both having the same sure. destination with the dish. Because for for every person who follows the directions, there's somebody who, um. Who, ju- who just throws a bunch of stuff into a pot and hope it doesn't explode? Well, yes. Um, let's be fair. I mean, we've all we've all um, had a go at cooking or baking or whatever it might be. Uh, whether you're just playing as a kid or doing it a bit more seriously with a kid, um, you have a you have a um, a recipe in front of you, a process that you can follow and try as you might, you're gonna make, you're gonna, you're gonna deviate. Maybe you've not got quite the right ingredient. Maybe you don't like lemon in cake, I don't know. But you can adapt things. And uh, and I, I just think spellcasters would. I just, and, and I think there should be um, almost a different outcome to that, which is, again, what we've got here. Um, fancy magic fills, which is obviously the common magic system that, that that D&D, for example, has been famous for for a long time. Um, it works in that you know you 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 can choose an effect and utilize it, and you've got something to do. But it's if if you play the game for a, uh, for a while, then you you you're 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 restrained by those same spellcasting options, um, and 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 so it needs something more. And I've always been surprised that they didn't provide some way of doing so. I think we touched on earlier uh, how there used to be a magic creation system in, in for example, 3E that, that filtered its way out, and though I admit it is apparently coming back in 5.2, um, you know, I always thought it was a big admission um, that it that it vanished, um, because it, it was at least one of those options that gave players that ability to create something away from the table, maybe. And even if you took it to your DM to make sure they're okay with it, you you understood that it fit it fitted within that existing framework that the game rules had given you, and I my personally I th- I think TT opportunities that are, permit that creativity, and trust the players the the DMs to have just have fun at the game, is is far more enjoyable than than having to look things up and then being denied the ability to do it because I don't know it's too high power or. Mm-hmm. Um, or you you use that slot, so now you're out. Um, but games or games, and we all we all have fun playing them. That's that's the key thing to remember, no matter which game it is. Yeah. Um, 
one of my dear fr- one of my dear friends on the on the show has the saying you play elf games to remind people that this is not meant to be taken too serious. Mm. Oh. I get that. That's the creepy thing. Of course, of course, on my, of course, on my end, I ha- I have a long history with giving my players powerful but da- but comically dangerous and unsafe um, equipment, spells, what not, what not. Um, the me- the well, this is it, right? Um, yeah. The great metric that, items the metric or... that, I u- that I use for it is the um, is the noisy cricket for Men in Black. I've given that in all but name okay. to, to my players you know does a whole sure. lot of sonic damage it's just that after you fire the thing you're going to be on your ass and mm-hmm. flying about 20 feet absolutely absolutely so i remember years ago i mean you're right absolutely i mean it's uh, some some consequence can be a lot of fun mm-hmm. you know yes use it but use it at your own peril use it at your own risk uh years ago i had a player that uh was keen to use uh, healing potion as a bonus action, and I don't really want to go into that all whole bonus action discussion. I understand in five point two they've changed it so it can be. Um, the the game rules were that uh, it's it's a standard action, and I kind of sit more on that line. To be honest with you, I I like systems to have. Uh, I like mechanics to have some difficulty. So you you've got to make a choice, and either work it so that choice is optimal or pay a consequence type of thing and that's the loss of a standard action or exposure whatever it might be and uh my solution to that was a a uh, a healing dagger so yeah sure it will it would give you some healing and you can use it as a bonus action with the right feats for example uh but um effectively the idea being that you stab yourself with this healing dagger uh but the consequence is that you you take the damage from the dagger first so you can't, you know, if, if 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 you're in that situation where you need one d eight, two d eight worth of healing, be mindful that you may take one d four worth of damage first, and make sure that's not. And if there's a risk that that's going to take you down, then then be mindful. Yeah. And uh, that 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 was it was that's just a, it was um it was we had a lot of fun with that item because it always seemed to crop up that the only option was the dagger of doom which could heal which could save you or or, or, or take you out of the equation mm-hmm. and uh, that we had a lot of fun with that it's, that's silly simple little item but yeah i mean sometimes introducing a bit of chaos it is, um, it is the kind of dagger that would very that would very much be approved of by um this world death <laughs> i bet you know because you know the the type who would get because remember, he's that particular version of death was the one who was perfectly fine with giving a kid a full size sword. And when, when oh I, gosh, and yes, the whole, the whole thing of yeah, death. absolutely. Oh, what was the get, line from Terry Pratchett? Um, they'll then they'll learn the a lesson or something oh, along those lines. Oh, the whole thing was you can't give her that; it's not safe. It's a sword; they're not meant to be safe. It was meant to be safe, right. yes. <laughs> but, but it's dangerous. It's educational. What if she cuts herself? That will be an important lesson. Exactly. Actually, this weekend uh, it's just gone. I I got out my uh, my Terry Pratchett books for my boy, bless him, because he's at that age now where he, I think he'd love them. And uh, unfortunately, he kind of, I, I think he was overwhelmed by the sheer number of pages of text. So I might have to put them away for a little bit. But yes, I can't wait for him to start. My, adv- that my advice: um, ease ease him in with the um, specials like the Color of Magic or. Well, ho- save Hogfather Night for December. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I mean, I love the color of magic, but it's, I mean, this, this is going to spark debate. I don't think it's Pratchett's best, but it is where I started. I love it for that, I think. I'm um, going to say it's my favorite, my f- uh, but it's a good, for lack of a better term, gateway drug. It, 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 I, I enjoyed it. I, 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 and it's, it's the one that I think I handed to my boy first, to be fair. But my, my wife suggested the Guards Guards uh, series first, and yeah. maybe that might be a better choice. I don't know. We'll get there. At the minute he's uh, like I said, at the minute he was he was um, um, off put by the word count. I think. So uh, w- when he gets there, when he, I'm sure at some point a friend of his at school will no doubt discover them, and then it's going to be a case of right. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get them out then. 
but uh, yeah, we're we're kind of at the start of that journey actually with uh, with Theo discovering things. So we he uh, he bless him he um, he played his first five uh, E game only like two three months ago, which was was an experience I must admit. Um, running running that for for my boy was great fun. I got the, it gave me an opportunity to get the the old terrain out and and miniatures that uh, have been in storage for a short while, and uh, and he loved it, which is great, but. The downside to enjoying it is that he's keen to play every single weekend, um, and we and we you know we we've got lots on, <laughs> so it's not always possible. But it, I do, I am pleased that he enjoyed himself, and uh, we're definitely going to play him more. Yeah, I I can certainly get that. Now, with Codex Arcana, what are you shooting for as far as a page count? We've had a lot of discussion over this actually uh, recently, uh, so. Um, without without art um, or descriptive sections, it's, it, it looks like it's going to be 200 pages. So with additional sections, with artwork, it's, I, I'm suspecting it's going to be towards, uh, uh, let's put a cautious, two, 250 pages. Um, that's presuming that I get the full 2,500 spell description in there. So it's it's going to be a healthy book, if, if that makes sense. It's going to be uh, uh, sizable and along along the right sort of lines uh, that that we want. We want we want backers when they back physical to get something that sits well on a shelf. Um, and and uh, you know we've 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 done well with uh, the likes of the Monster Companion we did recently and, and Lock Lairs. I mean the Monster Companion plus it is is two hundred forty pages. Lock Lairs is one hundred and sixty. So we're, we're we're up there type of thing, which is which is brilliant. Mm-hmm. I I can I can cer- I can certainly get behind that. And what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but a um, a gr- sure. a more of a bo- more of a ballpark estimate. Yes, yeah, yeah. So the um, what we tend to do with our projects is that we will release to digital backers. Um, um parts of the product as it develops which has always been good so you know it, it kind of brings our, our backers on that journey with us so they can see how it's developed they can see the progress and they can see where we are with it um overall we're we're estimating it uh, the program to be a year to properly play test it we want to play test for at least 6 months uh and though we'll be um making these amendments as we go you always find at the end that you have to go back and make wholesale sort of changes to, 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 to capture the entire mechanic. Um, and then it'll be a case of moving into layout. So we've given ourselves plenty of time. Uh, that's important as well. You don't want a, a rush program. Um, you need a program that does allow for these potential hiccups because there will be, a, every project has its own thing that sort of develops as, you, as you're moving through it. Um, things that you um have a strategy for mi- mitigating you know you've 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 still got to give yourself time because all too often that that plan doesn't 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 come through you know for whatever reason maybe you have an additional maybe you know you hit a, stre- a stretch goal which means you 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 you're pledged to uh, add an additional section and you've got the writer lined up but for whatever reason they'll suddenly have to have to pull out of it or you know it's i don't know ai art for example becomes a thing and you have to Go, go back to your artists to confirm that they haven't used <laughs> any AI in the development of the art they've produced for you. Uh, that, 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 that was an interesting one on Lot Lairs because we started that one uh, before AI, AI art became a thing. And then when we realized it, would be, it was becoming um, as, as, as big as it was and potentially toxic as it was, we had to, at that stage, go back to the artists and just have a chat with them, make sure that we understood exactly what they'd done. They didn't include any AR, and get them to sign something as well, retrospectively, that, that agreed that it wasn't AR, because we just didn't want that seeping in. That wasn't our strategy. Uh, but we were completely unprepared for it. And the, the, every project has this thing where something comes up and you have to adapt. And the only way to, to, to mitigate that is to give yourself breathing space. That said, our intention is always to, to get to the finish line as quickly as we can, but right, you know, you know, in the right way. 
um, and if we can release earlier, brilliant. Get that, get those physical copies, get that the, the digital release done and in backers' hands as soon as possible, because um, people come to, for example, Kickstarter for different reasons. Uh, we tend to find that taking our backers on this journey of de this development journey with us is a great experience for them. They get to enjoy the ups and unfortunately some of the downs as well with us as well. But we, we, you know, we, the the enjoyment can come from seeing how that's been mitigated or circumvented or whatever it might be. Um, but I do understand how some backers might want or might might prefer to get their reward as soon as possible. Um, but we, we've given ourselves a year time frame to to develop it and uh, and that's worked well for us in the past for the likes of the Riddle Register or the or Lot Layers etc. It's, uh, it's good. We have toyed with the idea in future of developing the product first and then going to the crowdfunding um which will give backers this um, you know this, this 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 immediate sort of delivery which is a great idea um but i i i kind of enjoy sharing the journey mm -hmm. um i can get and that. so I, th I think that's i think that's what i'm going to stick to for the time being we'll see we'll see I, every project is their own thing and we'll have to see where we go with it mm -hmm. But with that... So sorry, uh, Mildred, yeah. about a year <laughs> is the answer to your question of what kind of time scale we're looking at. We suspect a year, but it'll be it'll be well recorded, and uh, we want to share that with everybody. Yeah, I can I can certainly get that. Um, but with with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here and been a pleasure and a real experience thank you anytime you see fit to return the door is always open as i often say around Appreciate here it. drinking is not mandatory but it is encouraged i'll definitely pop the cork on something later on it's a bit early right now but uh give me an hour or two yeah, it's 20 it's um five o'clock somewhere isn't it it will be five o'clock here near enough <laughs> but yes you've got it absolutely oh. and of course a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness and there'll be plenty more where that came from as there always is here on the open bar of the internet but until then on behalf of the good brothers present and not present my name is Mildra I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.